In this video I'm going to take a look at equations that have no real number solution and we're going to consider the float and integer data type with respect to no real number solutions. Parts of the previous video showed how to factorize. You may wish to look back to that video if you haven't already seen it. What I'm going to do here is to look at this. If x squared equals 1, how do we find x? In other words, how do we find a value of x such that when you square it, you get the result of 1? Well, let's write this down, x squared equals 1. Now, I need to get an equation where we have equals 0 on one side. And to achieve that, I can subtract 1 from each side of this equation. So I end up with this. The x squared has the 1 subtracted, and the other side of the equation has 1 subtracted from the 1 to give us the 0. We now need to look at this and ask the question, what will give me x squared? I'm going to have two brackets, and I have two things, such that when they're multiplied together, we'll get x squared. And the answer is going to be x, because x times x is x squared. How do I get this 1? Well, 1 times 1 gives 1. So I'm going to end up with brackets that look like this here, all equaling 0. And I've chosen signs, as you can see here, minus and a plus. So if I was now to expand these brackets, you will see that this multiplication of x by x will give me x squared. I'm now going to ask, well, what is x times plus 1? And the answer is plus 1x. We then multiply these together, and that'll give me minus 1x, and then we multiply the minus 1 by the plus 1 to give us minus 1, and all of this equals 0. Now you can see here I've got plus 1x, minus 1x, so obviously that will go to 0, and you can think of them as cancelling, and we then end up with x squared minus 1 equals 0, which you can see is what we had here, showing that this, in fact, is correct. And I can use this to find out values for x that will satisfy this here. I've removed most of the calculations and kept the brackets, as you can see, in front of you. What I now need to do is to say, well, I can arrange for x minus 1 to equal 0, or I can arrange for x plus 1 to equal 0. In other words, we imagine one of the brackets is 0, and then we imagine the other bracket is 0. If I work on this here, I can add 1 to both sides, and that will arrange for x to be isolated and equal to plus 1, as you can see here. Or, I can come and look at this and say, well, I need to subtract 1 from both sides, in which case you'll have x equals minus 1. If I now take this plus 1 and put it here, it'll be plus 1 squared. And of course, plus 1 squared will equal positive 1, which is what this is telling us here. So I know this is one of the solutions. If I look to this minus 1 here and place that within this, it'll be minus 1 squared. And a minus times a minus is a plus, and 1 times 1 is 1. So that also satisfies this. So we can see that for this these two are the correct result. Both would work, the plus one and the minus one. And we've achieved this through factorization. And we used a similar example in the previous video. Before I move on, let me remind you of this. It is x squared equals 1. Now, we could also have said that this is x squared equals plus 1. If there's no sign here, it implies that this is positive. So x squared equals 1. What I'm going to do on the next slide, I'm going to have almost the same equation here, but in this position, I'm going to have a negative value. So it's going to be x squared equals minus 1. And let's see if we can find x for that. So you can see here, x squared equals minus 1, how do we find x? Well, I'm going to write that down here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to arrange for this equation to equal 0, and to achieve that, what I'll need to do is to add 1 to both sides, and that will give me this, x squared plus 1 equals 0. Now, what I want to ask myself now, if I'm going to factorise this, is what will give me x squared? What two things will I need to multiply together to give me x squared? And the answer is obviously x. 
because x times x is x squared. What two numbers can I multiply together to give me 1? Well, obviously 1 and 1. If I multiply 1 by 1, I get 1. So I will write down the brackets as shown here. And you can see I have x here, and when they're multiplied together, it'll give me x squared. And here and here, you can see I've got a 1, and when they're multiplied together, it'll give me 1. But you'll note in this position that I haven't yet decided what the sign is going to be in front of the ones. Now there are four possible combinations for the signs that are going to go in this position, in these two positions. Both could be positive, both could be negative. This one could be negative when this one's positive. This one could be positive when this one's negative. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take each one in turn and see whether I get this back when I expand the brackets. So let's look to one of them and you can see that I've chosen this being a negative and this being a positive. Now when we expand these brackets, let's see what we get. So I'm going to multiply these two together to give me x squared. I'm going to multiply these to give me plus 1x. I'm now going to multiply these to give me minus 1x and then I'm going to multiply minus 1 by plus 1 and that will give me minus 1 and all that will equal 0. Now straight away I can see that the x terms are going to cancel. Consequently I will have the following x squared minus 1 equals 0. Now look very carefully at this and you can see that this is not this here. So we can go on to say that these choices for the signs do not work. So this line here is not the solution for this because we ended up with this. And we can see this is minus when it should have been plus. The other possibility is shown here where this is plus and this is a minus. So if I expand the brackets now, these two are going to give me x squared. This is going to give me minus 1x. This plus 1x. And multiplying these two will give me minus 1. All of this will equal 0. And of course, we can see that the minus 1x and the 1x, well, they will cancel. And this will give me x squared minus 1 equals 0. So again, you can see that this is not the same as this here. Consequently, the choice of these brackets is not correct. Now, for this example, you can see I've decided to use two minus signs. So let's expand this. Multiplying these are going to give me x squared. Multiplying these is going to give me minus 1x. If I multiply these together, I'm going to get minus 1x. And if I multiply these two together, a minus 1 times a minus 1 is going to be plus 1. And all of this will equal 0. Now we need to look carefully at what we have. And we can see here it's minus 1x minus 1x. Now that's going to give me minus 2x. So what we're going to see is the following. x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And if you look at this, you can see that that is not this. Consequently, the choice of these two negatives is not going to help us find the solution. Now I'm going to consider the final possibility for the signs. And you can see I've chosen a plus sign in both cases. So let's now expand these brackets and see what we get. If I multiply these together, I'm going to get x squared. I will now multiply the x by the plus 1, and I'll get plus 1x. I'll multiply these two together to give me plus 1x. And I'll multiply these two together to give me plus 1. And all of this will equal 0. And now if you look at the x terms, you can see I've got two positive x terms. So when they add up, it will give me 2x. And if I look to what we end up with, we end up with this. x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. And you can clearly see that this is not this. Consequently, this here, these two brackets, do not give me what I was requiring. And I've gone through all possibilities now. I know this has to be an x and an x, because that's what gives me x squared. I know this has to be a 1 and a 1 to give me the 1 here, and I've just gone on to show that no matter what arrangement of signs I have here, I don't get the ability to factorise this appropriately enough to allow me to find out what value of x I can plug in here, such that it will equal minus 1. 
So let's remind ourselves of this again. If x squared equals minus 1, how do we find x? Well, if I come to this, I want to arrange for an equation to be equal to 0. And to do that, I add 1 to both sides. And when I do that, this is what we're going to get. And I've just gone through a process of deciding whether this will give me what I require. Then I tried this combination of the signs. I then tried this combination and then I tried this combination and we can see quite clearly from the work we've done in the video that none of these were suitable. Now what this is telling me is there is not a real number solution to satisfy this. So we need to ask what this is really saying. There is not a real number solution. Now to achieve an understanding of it I'd like us to refer to the number line which I've shown here. Now this number line you can see starts at this zero and it goes in this direction in the positive direction and it'll go on to infinity and you can see that I've marked off plus one plus two plus three all the way up to plus five but I could have continued with that obviously I wouldn't have enough room on the slide to go on much higher and for us to be able to read what the numbers are and I can also start at the zero and go in this direction all the way to minus infinity and you can see I've got minus one minus two minus 3 minus 4 on the number line. Now that number line if I put an x anywhere on it say I put a point here then that would represent plus 4. If I put a point here that would represent minus 3. If I put something here that would be one and a half plus one and a half. If I put something here that looks like minus 0.25. But what we are saying nowhere along this line can I find a number such that I can plug in here and square that number to give me minus one. In other words there's nothing on the real number line that will satisfy this or indeed this here because remember this is effectively the same as this here. So I cannot find a number that I can square to give me minus one. So in mathematical terms you'll often see this with respect to what we're looking at here x squared equals minus one is that x does not belong to the real number set. In other words there's no number along this entire number line all the way to positive infinity and all the way to negative infinity that you will find that will satisfy this. You won't find a value of x such that when squared gives you minus 1. Now if we consider Python we know we have number types in Python and one of those number types is the integer number type. Now the integer number type is really where we have an integer class and every time we want a variable we can make it an instance of the integer class and that instance can hold the value of any of the numbers that I'm showing here plus one plus two minus three minus five anything that's not got a fractional part and that can be stored in an integer variable or we can say that the variable name will be bound to an instance of the integer class that has a value and you can see what those values are by the examples I've just expressed. Of course we have another data type and that's the float data type and a variable of type float means we have an instance of the float class so a variable would be a name bound to the instance of the float class and of course the float class can have values on this number line so we could for example have one and a half minus three and a half and so on but what I want you to take from this bit here is anything on this number line can be stored in an integer or a float now all the whole numbers if you like you would store in an integer and you can also store a whole number in a float by the way but the float is also there to store numbers that have fractional bits with numbers. But if you consider this expression here, x squared equals minus 1, we cannot find a solution to that in mathematics. A solution in terms of a real number solution, a number that exists on this line. Consequently, Python also would not be able to find a value of x and store it in either an integer or a float type variable. Now the key points I'd like you to take away from this video are as follows. There is no real number solution to x squared equals minus 1. 
Now this is the same as saying you cannot find the square root of a negative number. And in this case you cannot find the square root of minus 1. And I'll be coming back to that. The other thing we need to concern ourselves with is this. Python data types, integer and float, are used for storing real numbers. So when we find a solution to this, which is finding the, really the solution to the square root of minus 1, the result of that cannot be stored in an integer on a float because it is reserved for storing real numbers. However, when we're talking about the solution to this, we will find that we can introduce something in mathematics referred to as an imaginary number and complex numbers. And these have importance in mathematics and fortunately Python is able to deal with them. So whereas we cannot store the solution to this in an integer or a float, there is another class in Python called the complex class. And you can store the result of this in an instance of the complex class and that's what we'll be looking at in more detail throughout this playlist on complex numbers but the key here is what I want you to take away there is no real number solution to this here x squared equals minus 1 and that real numbers we have integer and float we have the integer class and the float class to store real numbers check out the supporting website for these videos in addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?